Welcome back to the party package. My name is Owen. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the savior of entertainment and the prophet of the NHL season previews. Last time, we took a look at the Edmonton Oilers, a team with, of course, two of the best players in the world, and they finally have gathered a team around them to help them to get through the playoffs and potentially win a Stanley Cup. Now we look at a team that has the most playoff expectations probably out of the teams last season and this season coming into it. The Florida Panthers are a absolutely stacked team. They won the President's Trophy last year. This is a team that is, they have the star power of, say, the Colorado Avalanche, and then they have the depth to push them over that line as well. And they also had had the defense to back it up last year and goaltending. Now, this year going into it, they made the biggest move, the weirdest move, that has happened this whole offseason. They trade away Huberto, their top points guy the last few years, Mackenzie Weger, a guy that jumped out and broke out as a great defenseman last season, and Cole Schwint, who wasn't on the team, but Huberto and uh, Weger for Matthew Kachuk. Now, Kachuk is five years younger than Huberto. I mean, really, if you did Huberto for Kachuk, I mean, it'd be kind of like, well, what's the point? Like, I guess Kachuk wants out, and Huberto gets more points than him, but Huberto's five years older than him. It would be like, it's a weird trade, but I guess if Kachuk wants to leave and Huberto has to be re-signed, I mean, I guess why not? But throwing in Mackenzie Weger changes the dynamics of this team. But first, let's go over the good before the bad. So the good thing about this team is that their offense— is unparalleled, unmatched by any other team. Only if the Colorado Avalanche are producing at maximum levels can they match this team's offensive prowess. Kachuk, Barkov, and Reinhardt, Verhage, Bennett, and Hornquist, Lomberg, Lundell, and w Colin White, who, I mean, we can go through each guy. Kachuk gets 104 points with a team that I'd say is lesser than what he's going to play with on this team. And Barkov and Reinhardt, he's going to play with better players on this team. And imagine, and he's younger, he's still going to grow and uh, uh, exp uh, just get better. He's going to get better as he grows up. And he's going to play with better players alongside him. You've got Verhage, who jumped out last season in the playoffs and became a real player. Sam Bennett playing this season for the full time for this team. Hornquist is kind of going down, but he could be replaced by Colin White, a guy that had only played 24 games last season for the Ottawa Senators, who aren't a very good team. He played only 24 games, got 10 points. I mean, he got half a points for every game. I mean, if you expand that over the rest of the season, he's technically a 40 points player. Lundell is a growing, a young, great, growing centerman who was playing amazing in the playoffs. Lomberg is, eh, whatever, he can grow, cannot grow, he's 29, it's whatever. Nick Cousins, Louis Drinan, another great uh, prospect, and Bal Rudolph Balsers, who I love. I've always thought Rudolph Balsers could just jump to the moon one day. This team on offense is going to be unmatched by any team coming this season. No matter what happens to the rest of this team, their offense is going to push them to any victory that they can do, which was their strength last year, is that they were they could score at will. They had the most comeback victories. I think they might have tied the most comeback wins ever in a season for a team or something like that, but they had, what was it, like 12 or so comeback victories. Like, they, it doesn't matter if they're winning or losing at any point in a the game. They can come back and win the game no matter what, and that's what they did. I mean... This team was unstoppable, unstoppable. And goaltending last year, I know people say Bobrovsky's not as good as he used to be. But Bobrov Bobrovsky, I know he's helped out by the whole team, but he his win his record was thirty seven and seven last year. He had less than ten losses. That's I think that's a pretty good record for me. If I see a goalie with that, I'd be like, he's a good goalie. Who cares if he's the, as good as he used to be, I would say he's just as good. He just doesn't have to play as strong because he's got so much better of a team in front of him. And then you've got Spencer Knight, a growing goaltender who's already 21 and is actually already pretty good. So even if somehow Borowski does fall off a cliff, you got Spencer Knight that can rise up to the occasion who's already good at 21. Now the problems with this team is that their defense 
without Mackenzie Weger and the additions of uh, Eric St- Mark Stahl, have kind of top line is great. Forsling is already showing he can be a great defenseman. Uh, Ekblad, of course, is already a, an amazing defenseman. He would have gotten at least, I would say, he could have got the 70 points this year if he didn't get injured. Um, uh, Mark Stahl. Wait, did Ek? No, Ekblad's not the one that got injured badly. I forget. Anyways, Ekblad is, our, is an elite defenseman. But the thing is, after that, Gudis and Stahl, eh, two, those guys, those guys kind of fill the same role on a team, and they're both kind of dwindling. And Carlson and Montour, two young good defensemen, especially Montour, Carlson's getting up there. I mean, getting there, progressing. But what this team really needs is that they need to upgrade from Gudis, Stahl, and Carlson. That Mackenzie Weger was perfect for this team because you have Weger and Gudis, so you got that offensive driving defenseman with Gudis, who's a strong defense defenseman, and then you got Montour, and was it Carlson last year or whoever was there last? New Devara, whoever it was, that, that they fill those same roles. This year, they're going into it with two lines of basically defensive not defensive defensemen necessarily, but more defensive-centered players than guys that are going to drive the offense forward and bring their team closer to a win and getting points. So that is the main problem that they need to do. They need to upgrade that defense. Now, how do they do it? Well, they need to replace uh, Uyghur. Now, of course, there's John Klingberg. He's still out there, but the thing is that the Panthers are already – they're over $3 million in the cap space right now, so they don't have any money to spend on someone. So Klingberg would be a really good pick for them. I think he would be actually the perfect player to put on that second line, Ekblad, Forsling, let's say uh, Gudis, Klingberg, Montour, Carlson. That seems that – seems, that's solid. Every line, you've got a, a defenseman. I don't know if the camera just cut or something, but – um. Every line has a defenseman that is going to drive that offense forward. And Kling- Klingberg would be great, but they can't really get him unless they free up some cap space, which isn't going to happen. So I, I would say like a, the Edmonton Oilers are kind of having a problem. I went over them yesterday, and this popped into my head, is that they currently have Bouchard, Broberg, and Barry. They all share the letter B in their last name, but also they're all offensive defensemen. If they if they can try to get like a Tyson Berry, an experienced defender who can drive and has proven himself, they somehow move him over. Let's say they get Carlson for him, or something like that. That I think that'd be a great pickup. So instead of so you get Berry, Gudis, Montour, Stahl as your defense, and I think that could be pretty solid. I would say that they would want to pick up one more guy to replace. Stall, I think they would. I, they should rather have like a like an Eric. I know I say this, but every team needs like an Eric Chernak, that big guy that's just he can do everything and he's big and can he's hard to play against. They need one of those type of guys on this team. But defense, defense, defense is what they need to upgrade. Because last year it was great. This year they've lost their second best defenseman in Uyghur. They got to replace him. They haven't yet. And they don't have any guys to really step up to the plate either because Forsling and Montour, I mean, sure, they could grow and become that great defenseman, but they were already there last year, you know. They need that that right-handed replacement for him next season. I, I, Montour is right-handed, but y- you know what I'm saying. So does this team make it to the playoffs? I, of course they do. The Atlantic Division, they're going to be, I don't know if they win the president. I This team could win the President's Trophy again. But I definitely see them getting into the playoffs for sure. How far do they go? Well, unless they run into Tampa Bay, I could easily see this team, with, especially with a now grittier player like a Matthew Kachuk, who has that fight in him. And that might be why the Panthers traded for him instead and leave Huberto, is because Kachuk's got that, that fire. He's got that grit. He's got that grind. He's got that fight in him that you want in the playoffs that Huberto wasn't bad in the playoffs, but I think maybe they see Kachuk being more of that type of player that they would need to fill in that position to get that team going, especially with their new coach in uh, in Paul Maurice. I think this team realized last season that maybe they got a couple that they weren't as serious as they need to be. So now they got Kachuk and Paul Maurice, two pretty serious guys that, are, that will whip Maurice will whip this team in the line into winning games that he will make like they're not going if they're losing two nothing in a series he's going to be the guy that goes in there yell their heads off and make them scared for their jobs 
So that I think this team with Kachuk can probably go farther than with Huberdeau. So this team makes it to the playoffs. First round, I, they definitely get past the first round no matter who they run into. If they run into, say, like the Senators or something or the Red Wings, they're definitely going to make it past them. Second series, if they run into the Maple Leafs, I think they could probably beat the Maple Leafs. I think last year the Maple Leafs were held in by uh, Campbell's amazing play against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I think this year with Samsonov and Matt Murray, they're not going to be able to have that great as deep goaltending this year, especially with their defensive woos, that the, they could break through that. When they get to the conference finals, if they run into the Rangers or the Hurricanes, that could be more of a challenge for them. But I feel like their offensive push could break through that. And if they get to the finals... It really depends on who they play against there. But I could totally this see this team winning the Stanley Cup. This is a legitimate contender as they come. And as long as they can fit in a couple defensemen at, or at least one more amazing defenseman in there like a Klingberg or a Barry or some sort of puck-moving defenseman like a Mackenzie Weger, then I think that would be perfect to solidify them as a cup contender and maybe win the championship for the first time since 2000 or 19. 2001, 1999, when they went to the finals. They didn't win it, whenever it was. But, yes, that is really all I have to say about the Florida Panthers. So, until next time, make sure you pick up your free subscription down below by hitting that red subscribe button. If you like the video, leave a like, not a dislike. You can go down below to the comments section and leave any comments, concerns, suggestions, reviews, feedback, or other types of tangents, rants, or opinions you'd like to leave down below. And tell me, do you think the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup, and what do they need to be able to push them there? I think it's a defenseman, but tell me what you think. And until next time, I have been the party. Too sweet and ta-ta for now.